So picture this, your patient has had an MRI scan of their painful shoulder and you see something on there like a rotator cuff tendinopathy or a labral tear. Now, their other shoulder which isn't painful should have a completely clear MRI scan, right? Seemingly not, let's check it out. Hey guys, Khalid here, welcome back to Clinical Physio. So let me tell you the story about the research group who completed MRI scans on both the painful and non-painful shoulder of the same patients and then compared the results. This is the study of Barreto et al from 2019. They took those scans and presented them to radiologists and surgeons. Incredibly, the reviewers didn't find any major significant differences between the painful shoulder and non-painful shoulder in the vast majority of patients. For the most part, both shoulders looked pretty much the same. Now, of course, that did include when there was perceived abnormalities that came up on those scans. So the researchers highlighted all of the following. Labral tears, long head of biceps tendinopathy, long head of biceps full thickness tears, rotator cuff tendinopathy, partial and full thickness rotator cuff tears, osteoarthritis, synovitis and more. All of these different conditions were present on the scans of these individuals, whether they were looking at the painful or the non-painful shoulder. The only difference of note was that some of the surgeons found that full thickness supraspinatus tendon tears and glenohumeral or shoulder osteoarthritis were 10% more frequently found on the painful shoulder than the non-painful shoulder. But all the rest of them, on the whole, pretty similar between the two sides. So what does this mean exactly? What can we take from this going forwards? Well, it's clear that structural abnormalities on a shoulder MRI scan aren't necessarily that abnormal. In fact, we can say that they are pretty normal because they are found in the non-painful shoulder as well. This is quite similar to research that we've seen in the past from Brinjikji et al when they looked at MRI scans of the lumbar spine. They found that things like disc dehydration or disc protrusion were common even though patients had no symptoms at all. So there you go. Positive MRI scans are common in the non-painful shoulder. So therefore, when we see positive MRI findings on a scan, we mustn't automatically assume that that's definitely the cause of our patient's pain. Instead, we must try and correlate that scan result to what we see clinically. Does it match up to the subjective history? Does it match up to the objective assessment or the physical examination? If we had no knowledge of this patient's MRI scan, would we have come up with a similar result through our clinical examination alone? Hopefully, this method of thinking allows us to reason through things, not automatically going with just what the scan says. Hopefully, it allows us to be more confident with our diagnosis and therefore be able to make better decisions with our patients for their shoulder. So everyone, if you are someone with shoulder pain watching this video, please don't take this as strict medical advice. Always see a healthcare professional or a doctor to get an exact diagnosis and plan. Otherwise, if you've enjoyed this video, we'd really be grateful for you to smash that like button, subscribe to the channel for all our best updates, and check out our Instagram account at Clinical Physio and our website, clinicalphysio.com. My name's Khalid. Thank you so much for watching. See you soon here on Clinical Physio.